Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Winnie the Pooh, the characters, Christopher Robin, Piglet, Eeyore. All of these beloved characters are now in the public domain. And some very ambitious filmmakers decided, you know what? We're going to make a Winnie the Pooh horror movie. And uh, this movie, which I'm told was made for $60,000, a very inexpensive horror film. Uh, I mean, that's really cheap for a horror film. Uh, was released to theaters for one day through Fathom Events. I was there at a packed screening. First of all, shocked how many people were at this screening. And, you know, a movie made for that price, my expectations were low. My expectations were low. Also from seeing the trailer, you can view the trailer online for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. It is about Christopher Robin going back to visit the Hundred Acre Wood with his new wife to introduce him to his childhood friend, Winnie the Pooh, who has now become a giant six foot six plus creature that is a murderous, murderous monster. No reason is given for this. Uh, they're sort of suggested the reason may be that Christopher Robin abandoned his friend. So Winnie the Pooh is joined by another giant monster a, a, a menacing version of Piglet and the two of them basically kill Christopher Robin's new wife, string him up, tie him up in chains to torture Christopher Robin. And then very fortuitously, a group of girls, a bunch of girls are renting an Airbnb in the woods and are just going to have a great time. They're going to, you know, drink, they're going to hang out, margaritas, we're going to be in the pool. We're just going to have fun. Well, of course, all of that is ruined by Winnie the Pooh with a little help from Piglet. Um, the audience, myself included, did not take this film seriously at all. I mean, I did not go into Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey thinking this would be a good movie. It is objectively a bad film. Is it a fun film to see after a couple of drinks with a packed audience Knowing that what you're about to see is garbage, it is, yes. It is a fun movie. It is not a good movie. Uh, and, and so many aspects of this are bad, but the deaths, I'm surprised they actually, with a budget though so low, went so graphic with some of the deaths. I mean, heads get like ran over with cars. Um, people aren't just killed. They're kind of like killed. And then it's like Winnie the Pooh keeps going. There's no explanation whatsoever for this. Like no explanation for like why Winnie the Pooh is on a murderous spree, why Piglet is, and Piglet looks creepy, like a grown pig. Uh, there are no other characters. I feel like they just had, literally, I feel like they had just enough money to make those two costumes. Although I feel like the thing that did bug me about this, so I can't give it, I'm not giving this movie a good review. I'm saying it's a bad movie that if you want to laugh, um, it, it's a movie that in, in inevitably is going to end up being on best of the worst uh, reviewed by red letter media. And I'm really curious what those guys think of it. Cause this is, this is definitely, you know, in, in the wheelhouse of movies that they like to cover. I, but I, I also love bad movies for entertainment. We're talking about almost everything on Tubi. So yeah. um which ran so you're super in the super bad it's good category. It's uh I don't know that it completely circles back to good. Uh I'm still waking up here folks, but it's uh I had a good time watching the film. It's also 90 minutes. It's just 90 minutes. There's a little animated sequence that opens it that is kind of funny. It's like pencil drawn animation. You could see the low budget nature of it, but I will say this, the lighting was better than Marlowe. It's actually in the dark. Mm -hmm with like dramatic lighting. It mostly takes place at night with, you know, after Christopher Robin is kind of, you know, strung up and tortured, uh, they go after all of these young girls and it's all the cliches, of, which which I actually like. All the cliches of, because we've kind of gotten away from that genre. It's like, you know, girls and they're in their like bathing suits and they're like, okay, we're gonna, we're having a fun time at the cabin by ourselves. And then murderous beloved characters from fiction invade. I The thing that bugged me about the movie was the missed opportunities. They could have actually had 
Winnie the Pooh just wearing a red shirt and no bottoms or being pantsless, which would have been, or at least one shot where he's like in the <laughs> classic Winnie the Pooh red shirt. He has no pants. And then there's like a long dongler down there uh, or just maybe a, a sort of a disfigured version of that. I know it sounds weird. I'm probably thinking about this movie way more than anybody else here, but I love good, bad movies. This is just sort of barely passes muster for that. But I think the thing that saved it for me was one, I went to happy hour before the film. And secondly, the theater was packed. I did not expect it to be that crowded because it's not on AMC a list. You have to pay to go to this. You have to pay to, to it's like 20 bucks for the, and I, look, I go to Fandango. Fathom events. Events. Yeah. Fathom events. Fandango. I said Fandango. It's fat. Fathom events. I go to Fathom event movies all the time. I love them. I like retro films and I like small indie movies that get limited release. Like, um, well, Terrifier 2 actually got a big release. Uh, but, you know, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, brilliant. My hat's off to the filmmakers for actually timing the release of it exactly to when Winnie the Pooh is public domain. Uh, in the future, are we going to see public domain films made about characters like Batman, Superman? Mickey Mouse, there are other characters and big corporations are fighting this. Uh, unfortunately, my money is on the big corporations uh, being able to hold on to their IP or come up with some legal language or some legal justification of, well, you can't really do a Mickey Mouse. But uh, the filmmakers here, my hat's off to them. They, they saw an opportunity. They saw Winnie the Pooh falling into public domain. They decided to make a cheesy horror film about it. And, uh, a mild recommendation. I think the context under which you see the movie, if you sat and watched this movie by yourself at home, you may or may not walk away with a good impression. I think if you see it with a group of friends uh, and 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 you're having drinks. Make it, make it an event, basically. Make it an event. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, I, you know what, I, mean, I, I, have to admire, I have to admire the filmmakers because I believe when the announcement came out that Disney wasn't going to fight the, the copyright, the that uh that this announcement for this movie came out like days later yeah and uh and you know the winner goes to the first person to do it and and these guys are the winners and and what i'm hearing from you is it sounds like it, the whole movie was just rushed uh, you well, know they're, they're yeah. just trying um, to they're trying to be the first and they're trying to hit a deadline uh and and they did it and and the quality shows from it well it's it's uh it's it it's sort of just borderline so bad it's good. So, you know, it's just borderline. So we'll see. I mean, look, I, I, I just think the novelty of it really made me curious. I will go, clearly I will see anything. And, and that's sort of, we got to get a review of it on the film threat website, Alan. We really need to get a yeah. review for, of it up there. Yeah. You know, Bobby I mean, LaPierre, who's one it, of my is favorite. It, is it on VOD now or is it? I would assume I'm so. Sorry, is on VOD would... now or? Okay. Well, we'll Alan, figure it out. Okay. Um, let's just ask the chat because Alan's internet is so bad. Is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, is it on VOD? Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Is it on VOD? I think Let me see. Uh, Bobby, Le... uh... Bobby Lapierre, who's one of my favorite of our writers at Film Threat, um, I have favorite writers on on uh, on the Film Threat website. I do. And Bobby Lapierre reviews a lot of exploitation movies. He in particular loves them. But what's good is he he thinks so deeply. Bobby Lapierre, we'll have to get him on the show one of these days. Yeah. Bobby thinks so deeply about exploitation movies. When he has justifications for why something works, why it doesn't work, I have profound respect for his opinion. So, but I want to see, um, I want to see Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. What is the, what is the Rotten Tomatoes score? I'm going to look it up. It can't be high. Uh, I think it someone posted be... it. Right. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, the Rotten Tomatoes score. <laughs> I'll share what this with it? you. You're, it's very predictable. It, the Rotten Tomato score, nine percent critic score. <laughs> I'll bet we could get it up to eleven percent. 
the audience scored 59 percent yeah. with 100 plus reviews um that makes sense to me it's like yeah i would actually that you know what that's i'd say 50 percent. it's a five out of ten you know you know it's going to be bad i mean this trailer oh my god this trailer <laughs> is just so uh definitely look up the trailer but holy god, i mean this is like you see can i get this to work i don't know hey man of the month oh we're not gonna do that all right all right we're not gonna do that let's just forget that but yeah nine percent that doesn't surprise me the 59 percent that makes a lot of sense let's get uh eric weber eric weber is gonna join the live stream here eric all right well okay so we have like a real quick what did you think of winnie the pooh blood and honey because you actually were in the screening i was in same thing you said it's it's not a good movie uh and it's also not even interesting beyond like the first the novelty of it right when poo and christopher robin and the whole thing at the beginning and then once that's over it's just it's poo as jason Voorhees, and and that wears thin really fast and we've seen that so many times the kills aren't that great uh, it's not it's not going to be terrifier too remember with terrifier too they did the same kind of thing they released it small and then the, people were like, oh, my God, Terrifier 2. And it turned out to be this huge sensation. It's not going to happen with this film because it's just not that good, as I just heard you say before I jumped on here. 